Hey, in this week's episode, we travel to a historic ghost town in Nevada. We're cooking up some flan the cowboy way, but there's a very special ingredient I know you're gonna like. Come on before the ghosts get me. for stopping by another episode of Cowboy Cooking. And like Willie Nelson sang about, we own the road again. We are, we're at Eureka, Nevada, an old historic ghost town here, standing in front of the church. And we have a very special guest. Lauren, come on in here, darling. We are so honored that you let me and Shan stop by. And y'all have a very unique product here, two bitch bourbon that we're gonna use in a Mexican flan that we create. It has a little of a whiskey caramel topping on it. How'd y'all get this name? Well, the bourbon is named after our two Doberman sister rescue pups, Miss Scarlet and Sage. So y'all are going to find out more as we put together this flan about these two amazing dogs and this amazing business that y'all have put together here. But right now we're fixing to get in the kitchen and we are going to make us some flan. This, uh, I get a lot of requests for this recipe on, on YouTube. People say, hey, we want to see your version of flan and you're going to enjoy it. And it's really very simple to this, honey. So we'll just go ahead and open that whole can and pour it in there. Okay, okay that, what is it? It is a can of condensed sweetened milk. We're gonna go ahead and use a half a cup of evaporated cow juice. And uh, not a half a cup, a half a can. One cup of heavy whipping cream. A little splash of vanilla. I think it calls for a teaspoonful, but we're gonna call it about that much, Lauren. <laughs> go ahead and we'll crack them eggs and throw in there. Three good cackle berries. But I'm gonna give you a little tip. I always like to make sure that the cream that we use, the eggs that we use, all have sort of come to nearly room temperature. I like to let it warm up a little. I don't like to put a cold egg in there and blend it because it's not gonna blend as smooth. So we'll leave it in there, let them set out here. If you're in a hurry, just run your little warm water on them eggs and you'll be in good shape. Now, traditionally, when this was made so many years ago, I don't think there was ever no cinnamon in it. I do like a little cinnamon in mine, sometimes even a little nutmeg, but we're gonna put a little shake in there. So now all we gotta do is figure out this fancy electrical gadget. And it is off and running. You don't wanna whip that till you make whipped cream, but I want it just good and smooth. Make sure that that egg is really mixed in there. We're gonna go over to the stove and we're gonna make the caramel that goes on the bottom of the dish. And when you turn it over, Oh, that's where all the goodness is. This ain't your cast iron skillet. You need a non-stick skillet for this next procedure because you could do this in some cast, but folks, let me tell you, it is hard to clean up and it is sort of hard on cast. One cup white sugar. We've got this on about medium high heat and we're just gonna let it sit there till we begin to see this begin to melt that sugar a little. We're gonna make the caramel sauce. Like I said, we got our hot water ready so we can put our hot water bath together. Now, Lauren, Honey, what do you think we should use to go in this dish? Which one? Well, I've got two different bourbons here on location. We've got our Pack Leader Reserve, which is a nine-year-old, 100 proof. We've also got our Eureka Gold. I'm thinking the Eureka Gold will be delicious in this. It's 92 proof, and it really stands up in recipes. And it ain't never even been unopened. That's right. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> there Ooh. we go. <laughs> People need to realize you can use this good bourbon to cook with to bring so much added flavor to a lot of things. And a lot of folks don't understand when you boil this long enough, you're taking the alcohol content out of it, but you're getting that good woody flavor that it brings out. Well, I don't know if it's because I own a bourbon company, but I like to add bourbon in pretty much everything I make. I uh, Bourbon mashed but, potatoes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We do, uh, bourbon goes great in the barbecue sauces. I've got recipes on their website for cupcakes, uh, putting it in the frosting. Right. So you can see that sugar is beginning to melt there a little. You wanna keep it moving because we wanna raise it up off that heat just a little bit every once in a while. You can see this. Now you may get something that's trying to crystallize. Just give it a mash in there and a stirring. It will get back to that good caramel smooth texture that we're after. But just <laughs> pours about a tablespoon full in there. A little more sugar. Woo! All right. Now you're gonna to have to get this back to where it doesn't crystallize. So you're gonna to have to smooth it back out. And this way too, we're cooking that alcohol content out of there, but I wish y'all were here because the good smell that we have coming off that, mm. 
Lauren, can you say, say mic check 475238? <laughs> mic check 472438. There you go. Okay, we're on. All right. So, Lauren, you can see that is a good, rich color there. Absolutely. We're just going to pour a little in each one of these. Folks, this is the little added extra that I'm giving you, and I just want to let it dry out a little and get hard and crystallize. Like it is, and I usually try to make a design of a country. Can you tell which one that is? Australia? It's, it's Africa and Australia oh, okay. combined, yes. <laughs> and let me stir this up a little so we can get that froth off of it. And I like to pour them until they're nearly full. Darling, we finna have some fine dining here in a minute. Looks Now, so we will have the indoor recipe listed for y'all, but you know me, I like to cook it outside, and we're going to cook it right over here at the church house, right out there in the front yard. But before we go any further, we need to go ahead and get our little water bath instrument over here. This is a 10-inch pan, which will fit in a 12-inch Dutch oven. And you know, you can cook anything in a Dutch oven you can cook in the house. Now, there's some things I won't cook in it. Foods that I can't spell, I won't put in there. That's sort of a rule I've always had. Place these around. Let me get this hot water. And if I was really good aim, I would just pour it. But I'm not that good at aim, so we're going to dip it. When you do this with an insert in it, I always like to make sure that the bottom of that cast iron has been oiled just a little before you put the insert in it because it's really hard just to sit there with direct heat for something that long on a piece of cast and there not be nothing in it. Well, that is reflecting heat back to the bottom, so it's sort of hard on it, it is. So that's why we give it a little oil. So we'll put the lid on it, folks, and me and Lauren will walk gingerly like it's nitroglycerin in there, take it out here to the fire. Y'all join us out there. No trivet today, so we're going to just start fairly close to it. This is some hardwood lump mesquite that we brought up here with us. Well, you see me loaded up pretty heavy around the bottom, tight, pretty heavy on top. Like I said, this is an insert in a Dutch oven in a water bath, so you can scoot them coals up pretty good. So, folks, when we're cooking at something in a water bath, sure, you don't want to sit there in just a constant rolling bowl all the time, but you'll see a little bubbling in that water. But remember, we're at about 6,500 foot elevation, so it's a little harder on your fire than it is down there at 1,800 foot where we live. Always keep that in mind. You see me lift that lid off fire with my good hammer there. You ain't got a lid lifter, you say. Anything will work in a bind. Claw hammers are good, but that thing was boiling. I mean, nearly a rolling bowl. I don't want it to cook quite that fast, so set that off. We're gonna let that iron cool out just a little. You see me rake them coals away from it, and then we'll go back. That's the way you can control your temperature, pull them coals away from it. Like I say, if you have to, take it off the heat a minute, be very gingerly not to slosh none of that goodness out. Lauren, we're here at this beautiful old church, and I mean, it's got some great ornate work to there. I, re I really like this. And We've got this property and it's gonna, it's gonna need a lot of work starting with a new roof in the springtime, but we plan to renovate this into a great tasting room where people can come in, enjoy a great cocktail perhaps. And also it's got a great back porch. We you know, might sell some cigars yep. and, and people can just come and lounge and taste the bourbon. day uh, Joe had our dogs up north with him uh, he was he had taken them fishing and I had a dog named Mocha Bean who I had had for 10 years and he took our other dog Hunter who's now 13 and a half up there with him too and Mocha ran after a rabbit and ran into the sagebrush and just disappeared I immediately got on a plane and flew out and flew up and drove up to where they were up north and looked through the sagebrush myself, but it's just this vast expanse yeah. of desert. And months after we had lost Mocha, I was online and saw a post for two puppies that had been abandoned in the desert and then turned into the shelter. 
Well, I zipped right down to the shelter and ended up leaving with both puppies, Miss Scarlet and Sage. So we have a, a whiskey party every year for friends at our house. We decided to, that we wanted to incorporate the puppies, put the dogs on, on, the, on a bottle on, on the invitation and sent them out. And our, our friends all said, oh, we can't wait to try this new whiskey. And we had to tell them, it's not even real. We just made it up. It's just to introduce the pups. And it just kind of planted the seed. And here we are today. Uh, thank you so much for having the heart to, to start two more pups. You know, there's a lot of good pups out there that need homes and they just need love. And uh, your two are famous now. That's you know. right. <laughs> magic of TV and ice box and ice chest. I cooked some earlier because these need to chill at least two hours after they come to room temperature. And I want to let people know that when you have them in that water bath and you've seen them out there, they were getting a little brown, stuck a stick in there. They were come out clean just like any cake. Need to let them set in that water bath and remain, not on the fire, but just let them remain in that water bath about 10 minutes. Then bring them out, set them on a wire rack, let them cool to room temp, put them in the ice box, and you can do it a number of ways. I, I really like it like two hours in. It's a little different texture than it is four hours in. Really soft, light, and fluffy when you just let it set about two hours. When you get it to where it sets like four to six or even overnight, it's sort of more like a cheesecake or something like that, or a creme brulee. It's got a little different texture to it. But we're gonna take these. You need to take a knife, go around the edge, and it, this part always scares me, you know what I mean? because I don't never know if they're gonna come out. Yes. We're gonna turn one over here on your plate and we're gonna pray here in a minute that it comes out. Oh. If you can get that, you can see how some of that is set up, but whatever you can get out of there, just pour the rest of it on top. So you can take a rolling pin to it. Seeing as how we have a hammer and we can just but I like to just take these pieces and I like to just crumble back up on top here because that crunch is sort of what's happening. And we put the crumble on top. Now I know a lot of folks will come back now and they'd splash a little brandy on there or something like that. What are we going to put on there? Bourbon. Oh yeah. Ooh, mm. is that good crunch? Mm-hmm. Mm. And I will tell you, when you properly cook one of these, mm. it doesn't have holes in it. It won't be like a piece of cheese. It'll be good and smooth. And that's sort of what we're after. But the, the caramel that's there on the bottom of the bowl when you turn this over and then it runs back over the top, it's sort of like a great custard blend that you ain't never met before in your life when you get the cream, the eggs, but the bourbon sends it right over mm -hmm. the top, sugar. It's so rich. It's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bust a move, girl. Let it happen like James Brown. There you go. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That is some fine yeah. dining. Mm -hmm. But I want to show y'all, y'all can do this in camp. You can do it camping anywhere. And you can cook this right out there on some coals in a Dutch oven. Now, folks, I want to remind y'all, this is not a sponsored video. This lady did not call us and say, hey, get your butt out here. You know, it didn't happen. We started following them on Instagram a long time ago. And we seen these pups, and I was telling Shan, these are good people. They love their dogs. The way you rescued them pups and then to incorporate them into this label, it's going to be known worldwide, Sugar, and it is a good thing. And where can folks find this if they need to? Well, thank you so much. We appreciate having you out. Oh, very, it is our pleasure. Very much. Uh, our website is uh, twobitchspirits.com, and you can pretty much find us all over the state of Nevada, our home state, and a few sprinklings in the in the nearby states, or you can order it online at lovescotch.com. All right. And as always, folks, I tip my hat, and I salute our servicemen and women and all our veterans who have kept that old flag flying wherever me and Shan go kept that freedom of this great country alive. Stick around now, because next week we go into northern Nevada on a very historic ranch to a dear friend of mine and Shannon's, and we're cooking up what we would call an end of branding meal, great ranch recipes. You won't want to miss none of it. So make sure that you share, like, and subscribe to all these videos, and we'll see you down the cowboy flan trail.